Hello, you are welcome to Remedia One platform for learning. This platform is especially designed to help students who are going to write WASI. Today I'll be doing a video on integrated science practicals, specifically the agric part. There is a diagram here and I want us to discuss this diagram. So let's go. So there's a diagram here which illustrates the digestive system of a named animal. Study the illustration carefully and answer the questions that follow. So we have this diagram here. This is the diagram. So we have parts of the diagram to be. Here is GI and then here is I and then G part IV, part II, then part III. Now let's go to the questions. Question A. Identify the digestive system. Then question B. So we are supposed to name each of the part labeled I, III, IV, and VI. Then question C. State one function of each of the part labeled I, II, III, IV, V, and v, which means after naming the part label, we are also supposed to give one function of each of the part label. So that is our task for today. Now let's go through the solution. Now look at the diagram carefully. The digestive system here represents that of a bed. So you can write either the digestive system of a bed or of a fowl or a monogastric animal. So each of these answers is correct. Digestive system of a bed or fowl or monogastric animal. So you can provide any of these answers and you will score your one mark. Now let's go through the parts of the diagram. Now part I, if you look at the diagram carefully, this part I represents the true stomach. This is the true stomach. Under name is proventriculus. So this is the true stomach or the proventriculus. Then part II represents large intestine or you can write colon or large intestine. So II is large intestine or colon. Then III. Let's see where is II. Yeah, this is III. And this represents the cloaca. Cloaca. C-L-O-A-C-E. That is cloaca. So that is part III. Then part IV. Part IV represents duodenum, the duodenum, or you can write small intestine, the duodenum or the small intestine, or you can even write duodenum, because all these parts are not clearly distinct in the structure shown here. So if you write duodenum, it is accepted. If you write small intestine, it is also accepted. So that's the part labeled IV. Then the part labeled V. Where is it? Yeah, this is a very important structure here. We call this part labeled here, we call it the, the gizzard. Another name is ventriculus. This is the gizzard or the ventriculus. So that's the part labeled V, gizzard. Part labeled VI, this part here, we call it the crop. Crop. That is the crop of the animal. C R O P, crop. So that is the part labeled VI. So these are the parts. I. I, 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 V, V, and V, I. Let's go over again. I said that the first part here, this one, is called the crop. There's a crop. And then here is the true stomach or the proventriculus. True stomach or proventriculus. And here is the gizzard or the ventriculus. There's a gizzard or the ventriculus. And then we then move to the small intestine, or you can write didenum, small intestine or didenum. Then from the didenum, we then come to the large intestine, or you can write colon, large intestine or colon. Then finally, we come to the cloaca. This is the cloaca. So these are the parts labeled. Now, when you take the first part, which is VI or the crop, its main function is to store food temporarily. So as the animal is feeding, the food will be stored here temporarily. Then after that, the food will then move to the true stomach or the proventriculus where digestion begins. The walls of the true stomach contain certain juices and those juices contain enzymes. So these enzymes aid in digestion of food. Then from the true stomach, the food then moves to the gizzard. 
and inside the gizzard here there are certain structures and these structures help the gizzard to grind the food so there is a grinding of food here so in this gizzard the food is disintegrated into smaller particles so there is a grinding of food here so you can write that the function of the gizzard is for grinding or is to break the food into smaller pieces or it is to disintegrate the food now what are some of the adaptations of the gizzard for this very important function of disintegration of the food? One is that it contains certain pebbles or gravels or you can write grit, G-R-I-T, or stones. And these structures help in the breaking down of food into smaller pieces. So that is one of the adaptations of the gizzard for disintegrating the food. Apart from the presence of these structures, the gizzard wall is also made up of very thick muscles and all these help in the disintegration or breaking down of food into smaller pieces. Now from here, the food then moves to the small intestine. In fact, the small intestine is a large tube and inside the small intestine here or the duodenum, there is almost most of the digestion of food occurs. Uh, it contains all the digestive enzymes here for digestion. So you can write that main function of the small intestine or the duodenum is the digestion of food, mostly digestion of food. Apart from digestion, the end product of digestion is also absorbed into the bloodstream in the small intestine. The small intestine contains very small finger-like structures those fingerless structures are called villi and the villi ensures that there is a larger surface area for absorption of the end product of digestion. So digestion occurs in the small intestine as well as absorption of the end product of digestion. Now, the undigested food or the feces or the droppings will then move into the large intestine here. And inside the large intestine here, there is absorption of water back into the body. So depending on the body's needs for water, water is reabsorbed from the feces into the body. So that's the main function of the large intestine. There is a reabsorption of water. Now, the final waste product, which is the feces, then will be... Uh, pass out or it, uh, it will come out of the body through the cloaca. So the cloaca is serving as the exit, exit for waste product or exit for uh, feces of the animal. But apart from the exit of feces, it is also serving as exit for eggs. See, when the hen is laying eggs, the egg will still pass through this cloaca, then it comes out. So these are the parts of the digestive tract or system of a fowl and the function of each part labeled here. So that is that. Now let's go through the answers again. The first question is that the diagram represents the digestive system of a chicken or a bed or you can write poultry or you can write fowl. That's the digestive system of chicken, bed, poultry, or fowl. Then BI, that's the part label. We are supposed to name them. The part labeled I is proventriculus or the true stomach. And that is where digestion of food begins. Digestion of food begins in the proventriculus or the true stomach. And then in the part labeled II, which is the colon or the large intestine, there is reabsorption of water. There's reabsorption of water in the large intestine or the colon. Then in the cloaca, which is part labeled III, that is where ejection of undigested food or feces occurs. But apart from the ejection of undigested food or feces, where it is also serving as an exit point for eggs of the hen. So when the hen is laying eggs, the eggs will pass through the cloaca before it comes out. Then the part labeled IV is a duodenum or the small intestine, or you can write ileum. And this part is where most of the digestion of food occurs. 
because it contains all the enzymes responsible for digestion of food. Uh -huh. So all food uh, classes, digestion of starch or okay, proteins, and all other food substances occur okay, in the duodenum. And once the food is digested, apart from digestion, the end product of digestion is also absorbed in the small intestine. So there's also absorption of the end product of digestion into the body. Then the palatable V is the gizzard or the uh, ventriculus. And this is where grinding of food occurs. Or there is disintegration of food into smaller particles. And I said that it, it has certain adaptations for its function. And one of them is that it contains gravels or pebbles or stones. And apart from this, it also has a thick muscular wall for this function. And then the last one is that the part labeled VI is a crop. And I said that the crop is a structure where the food is stored temporarily. And this permits the eating of large quantities of food by the bed. So the bed can feed. It can feed from morning to evening. All because the food will be stored in that structure called crop. Thank you for watching. My name is Samuel Enchi. And I want you to, anytime you watch the video, like it and also share it so that your friends can also see this good work. Thank you so much for watching.